Welcome to the Out of Bounds Breed Podcast, where we help inform and grow the community around common weakness in enumeration and common attack pattern enumeration and classification. This podcast is produced by the MITRE Corporation with funding from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Hi, this is Steve Batista. I'm on the community engagement team for the CWE program and your host of the Out of Bounds Read podcast. Today's guest is Rich Piazza, the Common Attack Pattern Enumeration and Classification KPEC Task Lead at MITRE. He's been working on KPEC for the last seven years. Today, we're going to talk about what is KPEC, why is it important, and how can it help me? Welcome, Rich. Thanks, Steve. So the first question is, what is KPEC? Well, as you said, it uh, stands for the Common Attack Pattern Enumeration Classification. So it's a uh, it's basically a knowledge base of attack patterns. And it's, attack patterns uh, are based on the concept of uh, software design patterns, which uh, the Gang of Four came up with in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, in the early 2000s, some uh, researchers decided that they should change the the uh, direction of the design pattern, not for uh, you know, common paradigms for solving uh, design software design issues, but patterns for cyber attackers, the common ways in which they structure an attack. And they're usually based on a software weakness, which is a connection to CWE. Who are the gang of four? Uh, the gang of four are four individuals, uh, Eric Gama, Rich Helm, Ralph Johnson, and John Velicities, who um, wrote a book in the 90s, which uh, a lot of people have sort of taken as a Bible. It's uh, a design patterns, reusable, uh, object-oriented software. Um, so attack patterns were based on those. Uh, how are KPEC, CWE, and CVE related? Well, I tend to think of them as, as one big ecosystem. And um, and there's relationships between all all three of them. So if we sort of start with CWE, which is the common weakness enumeration, that is a list of all of the software weaknesses that uh, are common in in, in software uh, programming. And a CVE, which is the common vulnerabilities and exposure list, is specific instances of those weaknesses that have been exploited in the wild. So things that have been, you know, basically out there, uh, people, um, you know, different uh, organizations share with, uh, with MITRE and NIST um, some of the things that they've seen in the wild or things that they have figured out from uh, development. And so, so there's a relationship between the CWE, the weakness, and the vulnerability, which is the specific instance of that weakness happening. KPEC is uh, is basically a list of attack patterns, and they're essentially an explanation of how you use the weakness to to cause an attack, to to cause an exploitation. So all three of them are related, and uh, as I said, I kind of think of them as an ecosystem. So when we're looking at KPEC, CWE, and CVE, don't all attack patterns start with a weakness? Well. Actually, the, the KPEC corpus is organized in two main ways, to, uh, which we call views. And first is what we call the mechanisms of attack. And there are nine such categories. And some examples are uh, inject unexpected items or subvert access control. The other way to look at uh, the KPEC corpus is organized by the domains of attack. And there are six of those, software, hardware, communications, supply chain, social engineering, and physical security. And because CWE is, is basically about software weaknesses, for the most part, uh, the attack patterns are related to, to uh, software weaknesses. So it's mostly the uh, attack patterns in the software domain. On the other hand, CWE has started uh, adding hardware weaknesses to its corpus. So uh, that, that it'll be, uh, will be mapping those weaknesses to some of the hardware corpuses. Uh, the other uh, domains, it's a little bit hard to express uh, what a weakness is. So, for instance, if we're talking about a phishing attack, which is a social engineering, uh, in the social engineering domain, it's kind of hard to, 
to determine what exactly the weakness is besides just uh, the targeted individual's behavior. Hmm. Interesting. So, you know, MITRE has this attack framework. How does KPEC kind of relate to it? I mean, are they the same thing? Well, that's, that's a, a common question. MITRE does manage both KPEC and attack, although they are community-based programs. And, and they're kind of both curating cyber attack knowledge, but they do it from a different point of view. So as I, we were saying, KPEC is basically about how al- adversaries exploit a weakness, CWE, where attack is more oriented towards understanding known attack techniques, things that have been seen in the wild, and um, then figuring out how to uh, detect or prevent those actions. KPEC is more about what we call getting ahead of boom, which is, uh, you know, to the left of the of the kill chain, um, whereas attack is more about once the attacker has gotten into a system. MITRE does provide a, a partial mapping between these the entries in each corpus, but it's partial because, because of this difference. So attack techniques are not related to a weakness. They're just... It could be just a malicious use of uh, a common application utility. And the example I always use is there's a, an attack technique called delete file. Uh, and that is certainly something that attackers need to do to hide what they've been up to. But it's it's not based on any weakness in, in the system. So it would never be a KPEC uh, entry. Hmm. So you said that MITRE has a tendency to manage these community events. Is ATTAC and KPEC, are they funded by the same source? Uh, actually, KPEC has is, is always been funded by Department of Homeland Security. Uh, right now, CISA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. ATTAC was something that was developed in-house at MITRE, and um, so it's, it's internally funded. Okay. So, you know, because it's kind of before boom or earlier in the kill chain, does KPEC become much more of an academic exercise or is it practical? Well, we hope that um, the community uses the attack patterns that are in KPEC um, to prevent attacks from happening. So it's not just a a list of uh, of attacks. It's things that, um, that could happen or have happened. And there are things to watch out for. Uh, there are a lot of vendors who use KPEC in their tools and processes, and we keep an uh, ever-expanding list of them on a page at the KPEC website. And um, you know, if you're listening to this and you're using KPEC, uh, feel free to contact us, and maybe we can add an entry for you. So um, yeah, and you know, just because you know it's it's a list as complete as possible, and you know. It'll never be complete because there's always new attacks. Um, but, you know, it it's, doesn't necessarily mean that um, they're just academic there. I mean, uh, th- th- these are commonly used by uh, attackers, so uh, it's important to, to have them all. Well, so if you have this list of attacks, doesn't that help bad guys compromise systems? I mean, can they just refer to KPEC and build bad things? Well, that, that's a, a very common question. <laughs> so, um, and, I, and I guess the best way to say that is, yeah, the bad guys could use KPEC to plan future attacks. But I think it's more important for the, for the defending community to have a, com- a, a, as complete a list of attack patterns as possible. We, we want them to have full knowledge. And anyway, adversaries probably know a lot of these attack patterns anyway. Don't, do some of the patterns get stale? I mean, you've been doing this. For, how long has this been in existence? Uh, since 2007. As, as I said, uh, the idea for attack patterns were, came in 2004, 2005, and MITRE started uh, you know, with a community of people who, who, uh, who came up with the idea started um, keeping a list of them in 2007 with support of DHS. So, yeah, this is, you know, since 2007, that's like an eon in in computer security time. Don't the, you know, the patterns get stale? Do they become useless? Are they no longer used or? 
Well, I mean, you know, there's several ways to think about that. So, you know, the first thing is that the popularity of attacks change. Things go in and out of fashion. Um, on the other hand, uh, a pattern that was maybe, um, you know, something that got, that wasn't used much with new technology becomes more relevant again. You know, and, and you know, buffer overflow attacks are still still alive and well and you know even even though it's it would seem like uh those kind of attacks um were a thing of the past and the the other thing is that you know attacks uh that have been mitigated via patches often often can still be exploited because you know people don't patch their systems reliably you know so that's definitely even though you know you could say well there's a patch for that you know that 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 can't happen anymore you know except for the people who don't patch their systems. So when when I see that you've been working, you know, MITRE has been working on this for a long time, do you think that the corpus is pretty complete? Do you think you got most of stuff covered? Uh, if that were only true, attackers are always <laughs> coming up with new techniques. And, you know, we just released uh, the latest version of KPEC, and we added 14 new KPECs. Uh, a lot of them related to supply chain, a few uh, related to Bluetooth and uh, the Spectre vulnerability. So, the, you know, there's always something new happening, and uh, this will never be complete. We, we hope it to be uh, up to date, and, and as we were saying earlier, not, not stale, but there'll always be new KPEX. So, you know, when I looked at KPEX uh, several years ago, there was a lot there, right? Where do I start if I'm starting to look at KPEX? Well, that's another good question, and that comes up often. Many people visit our websites, KPEG, CWE, and they feel like they've been thrown in the deep end of the pool. And we are working to improve the sites. And, in fact, we just started a user experience working group with community members uh, so we can discuss the various personas and use cases for CWE and KPEG, which will help us in, in the new design. In the meantime... Uh, as I said, we just did a release of KPEC, and we added a note to the KPEC website. So if you go to the KPEC website, you go to the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that, that says new to KPEC. And that's, uh, if, you, if you click on it, you go to a, a page which is, has a quick summary of how to use the website. So we hope that this is an improvement for people who feel overwhelmed when, when they just first go to KPEC or, or CWE. So if I'm reading through KPEC and I think I have a new attack pattern, how can I help add stuff to it? What should I do? I think the best thing to do is to send mail to uh, KPEC at MITRE.org. Um, in the future, we're going to add a submission page to our website so you can contribute KPEC content uh, more directly. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thank you, Rich. Well, thank you, Steve. This is, uh, I really enjoyed this. Well, that's all for the Out of Bounds Read podcast. Another one's enumerated. See you at the next podcast. Thank you for listening to the Out of Bounds Read podcast, available on most podcast platforms and at cwe.mitre.org. Stay up to date and connect with us on Twitter at CWEKPEC.